Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's a great uh, opportunity and pleasure for me to discuss uh, the climate change and food security here in this um, uh, session. And then with a limited time, because I just received uh, the paper as, as well as you look at the paper. So um, I will try to go to, to the slide go straight to the interesting point of each paper and write the issue. And uh, we know that uh, all the speakers clearly analyze the cause and impact of climate change and the policy implication of that change. So every speaker talk about it. Uh, I go to the specific one by one, um, start from, the, from uh, Dr. Mark Rosgren. Uh, he uh, using the impact model to, ana to analyze the impact of climate change. Uh, however, it seems that the impact on production, if we look at the feature, is quite uh, uh, not a big number compared to the price change. Uh, my question is, is that uh, the global price change is only caused, caused by the climate change, or is that any uh, factors that affect the, the global price change? Because uh, it's very, very high. It's uh, more than 200% uh, percent, uh, the, uh, the, the price change. And then uh, we know also the critical impact of uh, climate change on agriculture production and food security include uh, the effect in uh, terms of uh, calorie availability and the change in the number of malnutrition uh, children. Uh, Mark uh, give clearly in, uh, based on the impact uh, model. Uh, the, the question is, uh, how about the impact on macroeconomic variables uh, in, in each country? Because it's, it's very important that uh, the government can, um, can go straight forward uh, for the policy implication if we know the impact on macroeconomics and also the impact on other sectors in each region. And uh, also, the government can have a policy implication on upstream level and downstream level of the um, of the sectors. If uh, we know what's the impact of other sectors, and then um, there is a several uh, adaptation and mitigation measure is also suggested to be implemented, including increased investment in agriculture research and rural infrastructure, improved market and climate information. Uh, and, and other things. Uh, however, uh, I didn't see that there is uh, aspect on human resource development uh, because I think it should be aware uh, because uh, uh, people also, especially uh, the uh, the farmers in the in the farmers' level, uh, to be aware of climate change and how to have a proper adaptation. This is the one that. Uh, uh, by you at the first uh, session uh, talking about the, the adaptation. So I think uh, an increasing of the quality of human capital is very important for developing countries, including Indonesia. And uh, for the paper uh, of uh, Dr. Ancha Srinivasan, uh, I hope I have a good spelling. <laughs> uh, he mentioned that Indonesia is one of the highly vulnerable, vulnerable of climate change. And uh, in, in his figure, he also uh, um, mentioned about we can, I don't know whether it's all countries have the same problem or just for development countries. It's not clear in, in, in your presentation. Uh, we lost 6.7% of GDP each year. Is it only for developing countries or? every within Southeast Asia. So um, I think, is it not too much? Because uh, according to the <laughs> impact model, the, the loss of, G, of production, uh, the, the biggest loss is on rice, uh, but it's up uh, f from now up to 2080, it's just minus 16.1%. So it means if we divide it by year, it's just very, very small number. How come uh, we lost 6.7% uh, of GDP each year? Uh, maybe uh, we need uh, more uh, clarification on this. And then uh, for uh, REDD, uh, the, the problem is uh, in developing countries how to apply it and then how to make it balanced among 
the social, economic, and environmental objective. Because uh, we still have uh, social and economic problems, especially uh, for the people uh, near the forest. So how to make it balanced? This is the, the, the big question, I think. And uh, for the policy option that you suggest, I think uh, it's very limited that I see the policy option regarding on the demand side. Because uh, we know that uh, the, the people grow, but the people also very easy, uh, not, not very easy, I mean, we, we, we learn from the past experience that we can adapt. Yeah, maybe uh, for the next generation, we just eat one tablet for food, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, and then uh, what's the implication of Indonesia? Uh, Dr. Uh, Enda uh, clearly explained the policy implication from the supply side, demand side, and what if we can contribute. However, from the supply side, there is no policy implication how to maintain food availability through the year and the region. I think this is very important for Indonesia, not just uh, one point of time we have a food security. Uh, so uh, I think the improvement of the technology on processing sectors is also should be suggested to maintain food security because we know we, we lack of uh, um, application of the food uh, technology in the processing sectors. So we can maintain the food availability to the year and have our food diversification. And it's also uh, not clear how, to fi how the financial institution can contribute uh, since uh, credit allocation for former fi financial institution is very small in food sector. Uh, we can, as a comparison, uh, I have the data that, uh, for example, the, the agriculture sector in Indonesia contribute around 15% of national GDP with the 87% of, uh, of uh, uh, 80% of it come from the small and medium scale, but only 31% of agriculture credit go to the SME. So most of agriculture credit go to the big companies such as uh, go to the palm oil sector. So uh, how to have a financial institution also support the food security in order to uh, face the uh, uh, cl global climate change? And then uh, from the demand side, I think um, uh, uh, she mentioned a good thing about the, uh, about the uh, uh, food, diversifi food diversification, but uh, up to now, uh, it's not clear what the government action and support for the food diversification. Uh, I remember when I was in Australia, um, uh, the, the, there is a, uh, the advertisement in the TV, banana is a good, make your body sing, or something like that. So how the, 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 the government uh, contribute to uh, change that or, or uh, shift the taste of the uh, food consumption, not just depend on the rice. Uh, and then uh, given the fact that Indonesia has many regions and quite diversified, uh, as well as we have uh, regional autonomy, so the specific uh, policy in each region, I think it's, it's very uh, useful. So uh, we also could ask the regional government to participate in mitigation and also, the up to, and also for the adaptation uh, of climate change. Uh, I agree that uh, she mentioned about the capacity building, but I think the capacity building is also uh, in the regional level, as well as in the farmers level, and also in the in the uh, processing sector level, uh, and uh, along the the supply chain level, and also for the uh, it's including marketing and processing, not just uh, on the farmers level, but along the way the supply chain level, because we know that uh, it's very difficult to. To, 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 to go to the, to the market uh, and, and then uh, to know what the people, uh, what the consumer taste uh, want. So I think uh, the super change management system uh, should be more efficient. Uh, and this is uh, the one that I think we could improve to uh, face the uh, global climate change in food security. I think that's all. Thank you very much.